My name's Ian Taylor, uh, from Ian Taylor Trekking. I think it's six years ago now I climbed Everest. I was stunned by the beauty of the mountains in the Himalayas and especially in the Everest region. For the last 10 years we've been kind of building up to offering quality treks, quality service, individual service, which is what we're aiming for, to bring people from a place where they're maybe sitting in their comfort zone, they want to step out, they want to learn about themselves, they want to grow, they want to develop, they want to see something that might inspire them. I want to make sure that the service that we provide gets them to that point. I was in the Himalayas in 2005 and I always said I was going to come back. Um, I discovered Ian on Facebook and again got talking to him. He was actually the person who'd actually answer the phone, he'd answer all the questions. Nothing was ever too much trouble. If you emailed him or rang him, he would pick up the phone, he'd email it, he'd be back. And if I was getting stressed out or freaked out about the trip, he'd just always reassure me there. I am not into trekking. I've never gone trekking, ever. Like, nothing. I just kind of picked this. I was a bit nervous and I was hoping I was fit enough. And I wanted to make sure that people know exactly how to train, know exactly what they're preparing for. Ian was very open and he said that we'd be able to send him a whole range of questions if we wanted. So I did, I sent him maybe three separate rounds of questions because I didn't know anything about where I was going. So much stuff that was really helpful and then I'd send him on loads more questions and he'd always get back to me. So the Everest Base Camp track is for everybody. It doesn't matter what age people are. The key to success at altitude and to acclimatize or acclimate to the lack of oxygen is to take more time. We've built in an extra day at about 11,000 feet and it's giving us 100% success rate on the Everest Base Camp track. We definitely felt good because of that, because we didn't rush, rush up the mountain. Safety's been very important, very good. The pace of the trip, how we adjusted to the altitude, we were all looked after very well during all the phases of the trip. So our goal is not just to get people there, we want to make sure that when they get there, they're actually seeing what they're supposed to see. I will say I always expected it to be beautiful, the region, but I didn't expect it to be as beautiful as it was. I've heard of the Himalayas, but when you actually get there, like it's completely different. You're all around you, there's mountains. So at Ian Taylor Trekking, we have the most experienced people in the region, you know, 25 years experience, Western experience, medically trained, certified. Sherpas, porters, everybody can't do enough for you. Very friendly, um, super efficient, nothing is ever any problem. They've gone above and beyond in fairness to them. They know how to work with everybody individually to make sure that we're bringing everybody along. Every single team member knows their role. Everyone gets involved, whether it's a climbing trip, mountaineering trip, trekking trip, just quality on the ground, and that's what people are going to get, and that's what people are going to see. Everything that we could possibly have been set up for success was there. Um, these guys were amazing, they were friendly, they were more than happy to help. Very professional, very polite, very friendly, extremely helpful, couldn't have done it without them. We include pretty much everything. You arrive on the ground, you're picked up at the airport by our staff, brought to a hotel, into the craziness of Tamil, walking the streets with motorbikes, trekking shops, good restaurants. Different than every other city I've been to. Um, it, was just, it was a beautiful city. Kathmandu lived up to all its expectations that I had before. It's a wonderful, crazy city. I just love the place and I'll probably come back again. Then once people are you know, into the mountains, it's a very different situation. There's a 45 minute flight into a landing strip at 9,000 feet called Lukla. You arrive on the ground and it's straight into action. You're walking the first day, three hours. The trek there from there is like 12, 13 days. Most days walking five miles and it could be over five hours. So walking a mile an hour is pretty easy. Lots of time to stop off and have some lemon tea, mint tea, enjoying the views, trying to relax as much as possible. The most exciting part for me is the first maybe four days of the trek because you're in like all the kind of wooded areas and you're going through all the little villages and it's really exciting and it's so nice seeing each lodge because each one is very unique I suppose and they each have their own type of personality and they're usually family run. Really nice to be in and amongst the people that are actually kind of working there because you feel like you're more than a guest. And the food was amazing as well like you couldn't you couldn't wish for any other better food like. I was expecting basic basic it's really nice really good and lots of us. First class, absolutely first class. They're, they're, you know, anywhere in the world, you would pay big money for what we're getting. I'm, I'm not just saying that. that it's, it's been brilliant, absolutely. You know, day by day, we're moving up through the villages, up through where people are cutting their food from the land. It's almost been like back 200 years ago. Nepal is a really nice country. The people are so nice and friendly. Every day you're trekking for hours and you pass loads of people. 
you say it, namaste and everyone always says it back. Everyone's so polite. And like when you go by the villages, you see these people there, they're just so happy, like they don't have money, but they just have pure happiness. You know, and they're always smiling and always happy. When you come out of the lower towns and lower regions, you know, it's green, there's water, there's grass. You know, moving above 16,000 feet, the landscape changes. There's less oxygen in the air, there's less trees, it becomes more rock and ice and snow, and it becomes very simple. It's eat, sleep, and drink water. It was hard, I'll be honest. Like, the day we got into Gorik Shep, so we hiked like three hours to get there and we were sitting there and then we had to hike more to get to base camp and everyone was like, everyone was pretty tired but then we finally did it and we got there and it is really cool. The reality when you get there is, is something quite unique and individually inspiring. When I got to base camp, I didn't know what to expect and we got there, there was like sort of a cairn with loads of prayer flags and then there was the glacier, the Cumbu glacier then was basically to our right. See the whole valley there, which is amazing. There, Everest was there and then the sun came over. You knew Everest was there in all its glory. You know, it was, a, it was a terrific feeling. Well, that, that was mission accomplished for me. You know, that, that's what it was set out for. It was a bit emotional too, just to think that it's an end of a journey that has been in your head maybe for six or eight months and you've been planning and to finally get there, yeah, it was terrific. For anyone that just wants to come and see us, uh, they'll be left with a, a lasting impression that will certainly challenge them, hopefully to be better and to pull that experience and use it. Well, for me, it's been once in a lifetime trip. I think it really soaks in a couple of days later when you've descended what you've actually achieved and how far you've pushed yourself. And I think that's the magic of Everest, and there's no other mountain in the world that can do that. It's taught me, if you just put one foot forward and you try, it's amazing what you're able to achieve. So if it's adventure, stunning sunsets, Everest, the Himalayas is the best place to go. I'm always happy to talk to people. People can pick up the phone, email me directly, get on our website and all the information is there. It's iantaylortrekking.com and I'm available to answer all your questions and I uh, would love to hear from you. Ian's passion for mountaineering and trekking will give you so much more. You'll learn from it, you'll grow, you'll have confidence that you're going to get to that peak. We all made it to the top and you will make it too if you follow what the advice that you're given. It's definitely possible and it's definitely worthwhile doing. Any, anyone that doesn't experience something like this, they're missing out. They're, they're missing out big time, you know, so you got to go and try these things. You got to. You're only going to be here once.